podcast viewers. I'm Stevie and this is Bibi's Handmade. This is a podcast all about knitting and sewing and creating your own handmade wardrobe. Um, if you're new, welcome. I've seen lots of new subscribers lately, which is amazing. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I'm trying to get to a thousand. It's really exciting. So um, if you haven't liked and subscribed already, please do. Uh, there's lots more on the way. I've actually written show notes for a change. I know, amazing. So I've got lots to show you because I haven't been here for a little while. Um, I find it hard to podcast every week simply because I like to podcast when it's quiet, nobody's in the house, I've placated the dog with treats so he's not barking and yeah, where everything's kind of chill and quiet and relaxing so I don't feel so self-conscious that I'm talking to my phone. I know I'm not really talking to my phone but it feels like that sometimes. Um, also, I've got lots of things to show you, including some FOs, which is amazing. Even a tiny bit of sewing. Just a tiny bit of sewing. So, I won't go on, the sewing will be at the end. So, if you're not into the knitting, flick on through. Um, but there's lots of knitting today. I have two FOs. Two! Which is amazing. I'm really impressed with this. Um, some of it hasn't finished blocking, in fact, so I put it out to block this morning, so some of it's still a little bit wet. Um, you will have seen this before as a hoe, um, but I have my first pair of socks. I'm sorry I don't have a sock blocker, um, which is not so good. But yes, these are, put them on the right, put them the right way, I will insert a picture of them on my feet. Uh, these are the Vull and Vine Everyday Socks and they are in For the Love of Yarn Silk Mix. Um, I'm still not sure what the mix is, but I have located the colourway. The colourway is... See, this is why I needed notes. The colourway is Changing Seasons. They're still a little bit wet, so they're not as bright as they normally would be. They are quite muted, but that's a better indication of the colour. Um, Yes, they've just gone um, out to dry. So yes, I'm really pleased with these. Socks never look very exciting when they're on the, uh, on not on sock blockers, but I think I might have to purchase myself some if I'm going to be knitting socks, because I love these. They fit really well. Um, they weren't too difficult to make. I had a few um, sort of confusions with the heel. Um, it's not very clear whether you're meant to be on the right or the wrong side to start your heel. Um, I worked out. I was a big girl and I did it. Funnily enough, I'm having trouble with another pair of socks in exactly the same place. So it must just be me. Not much to say about these because I talked about them last time on the podcast. It's a short row heel. I made a mistake on my second one. Well, yes, I did. And so I didn't do the heel turn and I got myself to kind of here and then realised. So I ripped it back and I'm not the best at ripping back and I had a friend help me and she sort of said oh that's fine it'll be okay um it'll block out which it mostly has this side's not so bad but you can definitely see on this side where I've picked up my stitches um to go back to do the heel turn and the short row heel again it's okay it's my first go so I'm I'm not too mad at myself for that um so yes really happy with these I don't know if I'm going to be somebody who ends up with a box of socks I have a box that I keep my knits in um, so I could, you know, fill it with socks. That would be great. So yes, these are the Everyday Socks um, by Vull and Vine, and it's a free pattern on Ravelry. Really pleased with them. I'm really happy that I've managed to actually make some socks. You haven't seen this one before. Um, in fact, you might have seen the yarn. I think I explained last time I went to Alternate Universe in Bristol um, a few weeks ago when I was visiting home. And I picked up a few things. I picked up some West Yorkshire spinners um, in a few colourways with some minis. And I picked up some Stranded Dye Works in her Sanctuary base, which they only sell at Alternate Universe. So the colourway that I bought was Legless Flamingo. Flamingo Legs is the one with the black speckles in it, and Legless Flamingo is the one without the speckles in. Um, I kept looking at the yarn and being like, what are you? You are something and I need to knit you immediately. 
and it was bugging me and I just really wanted to knit something with it. So I started looking at shawls and I've never been somebody who was like, oh my god, look at all the shawls. But in the last week, couple of weeks or so, I've been like, I really like shawls. I really fancy just knitting one. Just give it a go, see if it works. So I eventually settled on the Susan B. Anderson Come What May shawl. It's not one of the most popular ones. It's not one that lots of people are, you know, you have to knit this at the moment, it's popular. But it had the right kind of stitch patterns. I thought it'd be easy enough um, for somebody who's not, you know, I'm, I'm not really experienced with lace. I've got a little bit of lace. I did a little bit a few years ago um, on a jumper I never finished. So I can do lace, but it was just like, oh, do I really want to go into like complicated lace? But it didn't look too complicated, and I figured if it's a Susan B. Anderson pattern, it's going to be really comprehensive, and it's going to help me um, get used to, you know, how a, a structure of a shawl. So I carried on knitting, and I quite liked it, and I finished it yesterday. So here it is. <gasps> Oh, so pretty. Now it's been blocked, it looks amazing. I've literally just taken it. It's been drying outside, so it's literally just come off of um, of the drying rack. Um, again, I don't have any blocking wires or anything, so I need to sort that out. But here it is. Oh, it's so pretty. It's grown a lot, actually. I was a bit concerned it wasn't gonna wrap around my neck, but I think it probably will now. So this is the Come What May shawl by Susan B. Anderson, and it is in, I just realised I'm showing you the wrong side. Um, here it is on the right side, there you go. This is in um, Stranded Dye Works Legless Flamingo on her Sanctuary base, which is a BFL and Bamboo mix, which is an interesting mix actually. It wasn't as soft as I was expecting, it's quite woolly. Um, oh, it looks so good now. The lace at the bottom I'm really pleased with. Um, yes, it's a lot softer than I thought it was going to. It felt quite woolly from the BFL. I don't know quite how I'm going to wear it. I guess I'll wear it like this. I wanted this colour simply because um, I know that it will go with so much in my wardrobe. Yeah, I just think this would go with so many things in my wardrobe because I wear a lot of coral, a lot of pink and creams and pinks. So I really wanted to make it in something that I could wear all the time. Um, I'm super pleased with it. I This is sort of my first look at it as well after it's been blocked because I literally just whipped it off of the, um, the towel that was outside drying. Um, it's a really easy pattern. If you are new to shawls, I definitely recommend it. It's really comprehensive, loads of help. I was not doing my yarn overs correctly in the first section, so if I show you the top, the eagle-eyed among you will notice, to about here. So in the first bit I've got my garter tab and then my lace starts, my lace starts here, so the first section of lace is here. And you can probably see it looks very different to this lace down here and that's because I was knitting into my yarn overs for some unknown reason. And I took it to Knit Club and they were like, I was like, am I knitting these right? They just aren't coming out as like very big yarn overs. And they were looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> that's not how you knit a yarn over. And I was like, I haven't done it in so long. I just totally blanked on how to do a yarn over. I've been doing them and then like in other things where, but they've been fine, but yes. My yarn overs were not correct, I wasn't getting any holes. So the first bit doesn't look so great. But to be honest, where the second lot of lace is, it kind of feeds in and I'm quite happy with that. Yes, okay, it would have been a little bit lacier, but that's the bit around my neck, no one's gonna see. So yes, it's quite big. This is a one skein shawl. I still have this much left, this is the skein. I haven't actually weighed it, so I'm not sure how much um, I've got left but there should be enough I reckon for some heels and toes or part of another shawl maybe just a stripe or something um there was 400 I can't remember if it's 404 or 420 uh in the yardage I will put it on the screen but yes it even has a little ruffle and I was sort of debating do I want a ruffle is it too girly is it a bit over the top um but no 
I really like the ruffle. In fact, the ruffle, I think, makes it. Um, it just adds a bit of movement because by the end I had 400 nearly stitches and I thought that it was just taking me so long and last night I just thought I have like four rows left until I have to bind off. I'm just finishing it now. I'm going to put it on because I'm really, really happy with it. And then I don't really know, how does one wear a shawl? Is this how we do it? I, don't, I know there's lots of different ways. I haven't obviously woven in my end as you can see. Um, is that I kind of think that's how I'm gonna wear it most of the time um, I might wear it around my shoulders but it's not really something I do um, I also used a Russian bind off which I've never done before but it was really good I know it's 400 stitches so it felt like forever but what you do is you knit the first one slip it over and then you knit through the back loops two together yeah knit two together through the back loops yeah so it felt like a proper faff but actually, it's really neat. It's two rows of garter, and then it kind of flips the garter over, which I kind of like. This is the Come What May shawl by Susan B. Anderson, and it is actually really light. I thought, am I gonna wear a shawl in this sort of spring and summer? But I think I definitely will be wearing this a lot. Um, yeah, so that is my second FO, and my last FO, but one that you've not even seen before, so I thought that was pretty good. It looks like, on Ravelry, I knit it in about two weeks. Um, so there will be more shawls in my future, particularly one skeiners, because I've got a few one, skein sh one skeins that don't go with anything else. I've got a particularly good one, uh, Bill and Fleur Get Married by Nora George in an MCN. <gasps> it's so gorgeous, and that, would make an amazing one skein short two whips um i think i've got a couple of new ones but they're small and i've got yeah and i've got one big one which is not really much well i don't know if it's much further i can't remember what it looked like last time i showed you to be honest um oh i've got ends everywhere it is my rocane so this is rocane from pom pom Again, I can't remember what issue, I put it up on screen. It is by Christina Dane, though. Dane, hey? Dane, hey? I'm really sorry, I've not got that right. Um, and the yarn is another Stranded Dye Works. This is Stranded Dye Works Castaway DK, which I think is Superwash Merino, in her Blue Rinse colourway. Sorry, getting rid of all the ends. So I have completed the front. It's such an amazing stitch pattern. It's like a tree of life in the middle. It's so pretty. I'm trying to get it so it'll focus. And then you've got these kind of like, well, they're not even mock cables. They're just kind of zigzags down the side. Um, yep, so I finished the front and apart from my obviously provisional cast on, so I need to do the ribbing. Um, then I'm doing, I have to do the same on the back, but a little bit longer on the back. So the back is at the point where I think I cast off for the neckline on the front. So I've got a little bit longer to go on the back. Um, but once I've got to my shoulders, you work the shoulders separately in, uh, with two balls of yarn. I don't think mine look too different actually. Um, I haven't on the back done as much, but I haven't I haven't done very much changing skeins um, on the back, simply because um, I don't think people are going to see much of the back, and I don't think it will matter that much. And I'm a bit concerned about the lack of yarn that I have. I have this left plus another skein I haven't um, put into a ball yet, and. I think I've got another tiny little bit. So I'm gonna be finishing off this bit soon and then onto the sleeve. So it might be the case that I did buy enough yarn. I know I did because me and uh, Amy worked it out at Unraveled how much I would need. Um, and we would have overdone it a bit. So I'm hoping I've got enough left for something else, like a little hat or something. Cause it's really lovely, lovely yarn. Um, I love this pattern. It's, I originally thought it was gonna be cabled just looking at it but then when I actually realized it's um it's all knit pearl stitches just in different um just charted in different ways 
So it's just like a traveling pearl to create this sort of diagonal. And then you've just got sort of mix and matched pearls up and down. It's really clever. And then there's a garter ridge. It's called a rig and furrow apparently. And apparently this is a Gansey. I didn't know that until I started researching it and looking at it. Um, but a Gansey is a, a Guernsey pullover um, that they used for kind of fishermen. Um, so you, like you would have your own Gansey pattern for your own family or whatever. And yeah, so I had a nice little read on what a Gansey was. Um, but it's really pretty. There is it's quite involved and I haven't picked it up as much in the last couple of weeks simply because I've wanted to knit something lighter and less concentrated because um, I have to stare at the chart for the rig, like I mean the rig and furrow is not too difficult but you have to just know where you are in your chart so I've got it on my computer on my laptop just like a little so I'm just ticking around these eight rows or whatever it is and then um, obviously between my stitch markers that's where the chart starts and ends um, and it gets a little bit complicated in the shoulder seams which is a shame actually they could have done it to make it easier but I suppose it looks better so I'll show you on the front so as you go through up the shoulders you still continue in pattern even though it's I think it's like three stitches you continue in pattern right up the shoulder and I suppose to make things easier what they could have done is just decreased to there, made the shoulder a little bit longer and just done rig and furrow which had been a little bit more mindless and it's literally going to be a pick up stitches and knit two rows on the neckline so it's not really um, too complicated neckline wise and then the sleeves also are in pattern so I think it's this diagonal pattern that I've got here is the one that you repeat on the sleeves so the sleeves aren't even mindless either. So I've sort of left it to its own devices. Um, and then when I feel like I need a bit of a challenge knit, I'm picking it up. I mean, it's not a huge challenge because it's just knits and pearls. It's just keeping track of the charts and you're doing sort of two consecutive charts and things. It's sometimes a little bit confusing. I really want to cast on another garment, but I can't decide what I want. Um, I have swatched for Puntilla by Hohi Locatelli in the, I think it's the Ask and Four Ply Eden Cottage yarns that I showed you last time. So I've swatched for that. I've not actually started it because again, I'm really after something where I'm just knitting and not concentrating and then you've got to build the shoulders up and then, and then it's mindless. So I just got to get through that, that bit and yeah, get that going. So other whips are socks. I have two socks on the go. First one is Hermione's Everyday Sock. You've not seen these before. I bought some nine inch circulars at um, Edinburgh. So I thought I'd give them a go. So I am this far. Um, I am just about to do the heel, the eye partridge bit. And I keep going backwards and forwards on this what side I'm meant to be on for the heel. Um, I've done it wrong again, I'm pretty sure. It doesn't say in the pattern you need to be on the wrong side. And um, in my head I need to be on the wrong side and I need to be doing it across the 32 stitches. Um, but it doesn't say that in the pattern. So I'm just a bit like, do I do it on the wrong side? Don't I do it on the wrong side? Um, I really love the stitch pattern. This is that West Yorkshire Spinners in Spearmint and I can't remember the colour of the blue. Juniper. So this is what my heels and toes are going to be in, that's Juniper. Um, it's a nice squishy cake. I'll explain why it's a cake later and not a ball. This is what I've been doing with most of my stuff. Um, yes, so the stitch pattern is really pretty. It's really easy, really mindless. And this is the spearmint. Had I thought ahead, I wouldn't have started with the spearmint. I would have started with juniper and then done the stitch. But I forgot. It doesn't matter. It's how it goes. Um, yes, so I've just put in my second colour, which is going to be juniper. Um, I'm not sure if I love the contrast right now, but I might do once I've knit the heel. I'll see. Um, but yes, this is also a free pattern on Ravelry by Erica Luda. I think I'll put it down below. Um, it's a freebie pattern. Millions of people have knit it. Um, it's quite textural. It's quite pretty. Um, and mindless. And this is the West Yorkshire Spinners. It's coming out very woolly. Very woolly. 
Um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that for socks, but we'll see once it's washed and blocked. I'm sure it'd be absolutely lovely because I love all the colours of West Yorkshire spinners and I've got my eye on more. So I have been a bit of a pattern fiend of late and I have been umming and eyeing about Helen Stewart's Sock Club. So I was like, yes, I want it. I love Magnolia. Um, I loved her fairy lights and I love winter rose so I was like do you know what it's my birthday week um it was my birthday on Wednesday by the way guys so that's why there is somewhat lots of stash enhancement um anyway so I bought myself for my birthday <laughs> uh, the sock society so I have a little bit of twisted rib here in West Yorkshire Spinners Penny Royal and I'm gonna do the winter rose socks so it's the one with the lace on it so this is going to be my contrast color and this is cinnamon stick and that's going to be my main color so it's going to be kind of neutrally pretty but i'm desperate to order penny royal um in this size because i want to knit some socks either opposites or just in this color because i was loving knitting this kind of dusty purpley lilac-y color it's really kind of grown up and i really like it and also, I failed to notice until these were next to each other that I'm basically going for the same sort of colour palette as my um, For the Love of Yarn socks. So yeah, not much to see on that yet. Um, I will start the pattern soon because I'm almost at the end of my ribbing. Um, but I'm desperate to knit those socks because I think they're really, really cute. And I bought fairy lights and I didn't realise that in the pattern you get the fairy lights for free. How annoying is that when that happens? Just need to keep on top of everybody's deals and things and I miss some sometimes and it's a bit annoying. So that is all of my yarny whips. So I'm gonna to move to stash enhancement. It's not huge. Um, I'm still waiting on quite a lot, which is partly why it's not so huge. Um, I've done a huge knit picks order, which I haven't received yet and a few more hand dyed that take a few weeks to dye up and then get shipped. So they'll be on the next podcast I expect. So as it was my birthday, my husband was like, what do you want? And I was like, yarn. And he's like, do you though? You've got lots. And I'm like, mm, okay. So I hopped onto Amazon and I decided to buy a wool winder. Um, so I bought the Knit Pro, well, I bought, my husband bought the Knit Pro wool winder for me, um, which is why my juniper is in a lovely cake because this is the first cake that I've done of a mini skein and it's quite pretty. Um, it did quite well um, simply because I've been winding by hand and it's exhausting and taking me hours. And I just thought it's worth a go. I think I will need a Swift at some point. Um, I've got my eye on the Amish Swift, which is the one that's kind of flat because I think it will store better, but they are quite expensive to have shipped over, um, even though they're on Amazon. So I'm tempted to get one of those to go with it, but I'm loving it so far. I've only used it once, but it looks brilliant. I just have to hang it off the side of my ironing board so that it, the, the um, hank doesn't get tangled. I did ask for these. Um, he is good, but he he's not that good in that he wouldn't know which books to get me. So I got Knitting in the North. Hooray! Um, I've wanted this for ages. There's loads and loads of colour work in it. It's by Hilary Grant. It's 30 contemporary hats, gloves, scarves and jumpers. And it's basically the same stitch patterns. Um, just to give you a, obviously won't give you the pattern, but... Um, yeah, lots of the same stitch patterns, but made up into different things. I particularly love this one here. And there's two jumpers in the back, which is amazing. Because I really love knitting colour work. And I think there's another derivative of that. And there's this one called Loki. Yeah, so I really like that. I wanted it for ages. Um, I'm not very good at buying books. 
I, I love books and I have loads so I try not to buy myself too much. Um, the other one that I got that I've been waiting to look at for ages is Plum Dandy Knits by um, Alicia Plummer. I could knit pretty much anything that Alicia Plummer puts out because I absolutely love her style. I love that they're simple but kind of like relaxed. Um, yeah, and lots of things I had favourited on Ravelry um, were out of this book. So it's an interweave book and some of my favourites, let's pick out some. Uh, Langlade with the sleeves, I don't know if you can see the lace on the sleeves, so pretty. And there's a cardigan in here as well. Oh, I like this wrap, this cape Elizabeth. I think that's so cool. My mum would absolutely adore this. It's just her style. Um, it's kind of like a poncho wrap. It's a, a wrap that's seamed at the top. So you kind of wear it over your shoulders or you could wear it, I guess, as a, if you scrunched it up as a um, shawl type thing. Ramsey, the Ramsey shawl. I really like that. Now I know how to do my eyelets properly. I'm not really sure if it's Jean C or Jenna C. So pretty, so relaxed, and I really love her style. So I'm really happy with this one. I'm definitely gonna have a project out of there really, really soon. And the last one I have wanted for ages. I favorited absolutely everything in it. Um, and again, it's one of those people that I just love their style. And it is the Madder Anthology one. Um, by Carrie Bostick Hogue and again it's just I love everything in it um, I favorited all of them on Ravelry um, the Camilla <gasps> oh it's so gorgeous and they have different weights for some of the patterns so the Camilla I think comes in two um, oh it's a children's one as well look how cute oh. um, and a blanket stitch I think not blanket stitch, but a, a blanket in the same stitch. Sabella. So gorgeous. And you can get that in a jumper and a cowl. Imogen. I absolutely adore Imogen. With the lace down the front. That's been in my queue probably since I started ravel ravelrying. Ravelrying? Is that a word? I don't know if it's a word. Beatrice, seriously it's just literally everything in this book, I'm just showing you every single pattern basically for garments. Um, yes, I love them all, all of them. So yes, he very kindly bought me that one which is Madder by Carrie Bostick Hogue. So that is all the books, on to the yarn. Like I said, there's a lot more coming but right now I've just got a little bit of it just to show you. So the first one is a company I've not really come across before. And I found them on Etsy or I found them on Instagram. Somebody must have linked to them. And they're in the UK, which is always a bonus for me because the shipping can be extortionate from elsewhere. They're called Lay Family Yarn, Hand Dyed Yarn. And they had, um, an afternoon tea sock club um, or yarn club so I've purchased that because after buying this I was like oh, this yarn's amazing I need more of this in my life so I bought this because I'm from the West Country <laughs> from Bristol but you know we um, used to sort of live part-time in Devon and we go to Cornwall a lot um, it's my dad's favourite place in the whole entire world. Uh, so we go very regularly and she had a colourway called uh, the Cornish Way, which I immediately knew what she meant. Um, for those who aren't of West Country, um, there is an ongoing debate with scones, which is my favourite thing, by the way. I always have a scone on my birthday, which I didn't do this week, this week on Wednesday, so I've bought some for today. It's a bit of a sidebar, but it's my birthday. Instead of having a birthday cake, I always have a scone with jam and cream. But there is a debate that always goes on as to whether the cream goes on first or the jam goes on first. Um, so, the Cornish way. This is the yarn she's done for that, with that in mind. Oh, it's so pretty. It's 
Sp is it sparkle base? Yes, it's sparkle gold stellina. Can oh a little bit. And this is called the Cornish Way. Oh, it's so good. Which is, in case you were wondering, jam with cream on top. Because who, who spreads the cream? What's that about? Um. Anyway, this is it. It's so gorgeous because this. I thought this looked green, but actually, it's just a really lovely, um, kind of ochre colour. It's so, so pretty. And the yarn label, can we just talk about how beautiful that is? Look at the fern. <gasps> so this is their um, sock. I think it's called Sparkle Sock. It's 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 5% stellina. And it's 400 metres per 100 grams. It's so pretty. And it came with minis. Um, I have one of the minis. I have mislaid the other mini. But the other mini is kind of like a um, periwinkle blue. But this is the mini that came with, with the set. Thank you very much. There was two minis in there. I think there was only meant to be one. But thank you very much. That was really lovely. Um, oh, it just goes perfectly with that jammy colour. So this could be socks. But then I'm like, it's too beautiful to be socks. Could it be the top of a zweig yes it absolutely could so i'm looking for maybe kind of a natural color um and that could be the yolk part of a zweig because it's too pretty to go into socks but i've ordered the afternoon tea sock club anyway um i went back and ordered some more because it is so so gorgeous and so soft really really gorgeous yarn from them, so that's Lay Family Yarn. I bought that for myself. I bought all this for myself, let's be honest. I've just, you know, I'm one of those people who gets money and then just buys all the stuff for myself. Then, I've been waiting a really long time for this. Um, a really long time. Probably two months, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so, if you're not aware of the Hey Sister podcast, you need to go and check them out immediately. Um, they are so lovely and they have just the most amazing style and they knit and they have loads of kids and they have now started a yarn business which is literally they're just living my dream to be honest it's Tabby and Rachel are um, as I said they've just started dyeing up yarn and they took pre-orders so I went a bit mad <laughs> and I pre-ordered four skeins um, Sorry if I keep going between skein and skein. I don't really know which is correct. I prefer skein. My mum was telling me it's skein. She doesn't knit, so, you know. Um, I bought four. I wanted to try out some of their bases, but I also know that I didn't want to get all sock yarn. So, I got two of their Snuggle Worsted, and I got their Geronimo sock, and I got a Super sock. So, let's go for the worsted first. Their aesthetic is just so, so good. Um, I'm probably a little bit brighter, but I wear lots and lots of pinks, as you can tell, and corals. But I love the pale ones as well. And I just had to get this because they had made something out of it. And I was like, I'm not a brown person, but I need this. So this is their Snuggle Worsted. This is their new... Um, Yarn Company, they now have like a dyeing studio and everything. Um, this is their new label, which is so, so pretty. And this is Drizzle. So this is their Snuggle Worsted. So their Snuggle Worsted is 218 yards, 200 meters per 100 grams. And it is 100% superwash merino. Oh, it's so pretty. It's a lot um, yellower. It's not coming out quite so yellow. But it is a lot yellower than I was expecting, but that's fine. Um, I think it would make a really gorgeous hat. And I've got the uh, Lena magazines and there's loads of really lovely worsted hats. So I was like, well, well, I'll get some worsted because then I know that I can make some hats and they'll, you know, stop me from knitting it into socks or um, the million shawls that I'm now going to make because I really like knitting shawls. Um, so yes, this is Drizzle, which is a perfect name for it. It's so kind of, it is like that caramel drizzle. It's so cute. And there are labels on the back, can I just show you? Um, 
it's really good. It's like a, a just loop round which one you've got, and then they put the um, colourway in the little box. Super, super cute. Really love that idea. I think that's really useful, particularly for them. Um, you know, in a small business, if you can find ways to make it a little bit easier on yourself, why not? Uh, the other one I got in Snuggle Worsted is Perfectly Pink, and I think Rachel knitted a top out of this, and I was like, oh, I need in my life. This is it, Perfectly Pink, and it has this kind of um, rose colour in it. It's pale with like cream, and then this rose, almost like a drizzle in it and it's so pretty just to kind of show you in the I don't want to untwist them because they're twisted so beautifully I would I would unravel them but I won't ever get them back in there again um so yes this is perfectly pink on the snuggle base uh yeah snuggle worsted so worsted weight yarn it is really really squidgy it's super wash merino which is perfect for hats and and those sorts of things so those are the two that I ordered in the Snuggle Worsted. Then I think I literally was on there for the pre-order at the time the pre-order was on, um, like minute, one, maybe not even a minute after, and they were sold out of some of the stuff, some of the pre-orders. So I had to get two different types of sock because I was going backwards and forwards. And so I ended up with one of each, which is fine, I don't mind. So this first one is their Geronimo sock, which is 80% superwash and 20% nylon, and this is Fusion Frenzy. <gasps> Look at it. It's my colours. It's got my coral in it, it's got the rosy pinky colour, and it's got purple. And I love purple. Um, so yes, but this was bought specifically in mind to go with two other skeins that I have um, for a three colour shawl or a garment I guess if it's it's 400 yards so I've probably got 1200 yards worth out of three skeins so I don't know if I could squeeze a faded garment out of it maybe I've not done a fade yet so clearly I need to jump on that bandwagon so yes this is fusion frenzy in their Geronimo sock it's so pretty and that was a bit out there compared to the others the others were quite sort of subdued so this is sweet tooth this is on their shiny sock which I don't have the stuff for because they haven't got it on the back, but they have written shiny sock for me, helpfully. And this is Sweet Tooth. So again, I went rosy colours. And then there's like speckles of like tiny bits of spring green and stuff in the cream. It's really pretty. I'm really excited to see how this one knits up. This might actually be um, socks because I think maybe the magnolia or the winter rose or one of the, uh, the sock societies would look super cute in this and it is really really soft um i don't know the base but i will put it on the screen if i find it um yes i don't know if you can see the speckles of spring green you can find one it's one there so pretty um so yes that was my um yarn haul i'm really sad guys because I've been waiting ages for that Hey Sister yarn and it shipped totally on time and you know, that's fine. Then customs chucked a £23 customs charge on it. And I'd already spent quite a lot on it to be honest because it was, you know, quite expensive yarn. So I felt a little bit sad that I um, ended up having to pay an extra £23. <sighs> charges are evil this is why I don't normally buy from the US I'm a bit worried about my nitpicks order to be honest but if you have ordered from nitpicks can you let me know whether they charged you for customs because they gave me free shipping to the UK because they said something about having a is it that they've got a UK web address or something and so they did free shipping over a certain amount and then I thought it said that they because they although they shipped from the US that you, it, they covered the custom stuff. I don't know. So if that comes in, I'm looking at a massive charge because I spent quite a lot of money and got quite a lot of yarn. <sighs> we'll have to see. But thank you um, to Tabby and Rachel for my amazing Hey Sister yarn because it is gorgeous. I love it all. And you might have seen on Instagram, I put a photo up of it because I absolutely adored it. 
Um, this might be my, you know, my placeholder for today. What do you think? Okay, so that's it on the knitting side. Oh, I just want to show you this fade. Then. So this is what my hay sister was bought for. And I think I did pretty well, to be fair. So I just can't decide which way to do it. I think I'll probably go that way. So this um, is Sugar Plum from Stranded Dye Works. Okay. This is Tulip from Nora George with a bit of Stellina in it. In fact, the um, Sugar Plum also has Stellina in it. So I had these two and I was like, I just need a third to like break up the colours a little bit and make it a bit more interesting. So I've got 400 metres on this one. I think I've got 420 on this one, maybe 400. And then add my Hay Sister in. Oh, how good is that? It's such a good match for the purple and everything. So I might make this into some form of fade. But I can't decide what. Um, it's going to be massive. If that's what's that, 1200. Oh, blimey, it might be 1200 metres. No, that's only. That's 100. So that's 366 metres. So maybe not 1200 metres, but nearly. Um, yeah. So if you've got any three colour shawls or garments that you've made, um, that you faded up, let me know. Because I think this would make a really good fade. Um, I was desperate to find something that went with these two. Because I really want to do them justice. So yes, that's those three as a fade. I'm going to do a little bit of dream knitting. Just a little bit. And then I'll let you know what I've made sewing wise. It's not loads, it's just a little bit. But I know, I'm conscious that... It's about handmade wardrobe, not just knitting all the things. So, with that in mind, knitting all the things, <laughs> um, I have been desperate to make a Cobra cat, and I have balled up my Molview yarn. Again, there's a theme. It's pink. Um, this is the one that's dyed with Madder, and it's so pretty. Um, and that's their mohair. So I really want to make a Cobra hat out of this. Um, I don't know when that's going to happen, but I'm saying it on the podcast because I want it to happen. Um, these are called, I have the tags in them because that's organised. I have Veld Lace, which is 72% kid mohair and 28% silk, and it's 420 metres of that. And the other one is called Welsh Mule, Blue Faced Leicester and a local Welsh hill breed. And that's a DK weight, and that's 200 meters per 100 grams. So yes, I'm desperate to make that. I want to make a garment. I'm thinking Puntilla, but I may change my mind. I have the yarn for the confectionery pullover from uh, an interweave from years ago. I've got loads of pom poms that I'd like to make things, and I want to make a Zweig. I've decided that's the Caitlin Hunter that I'm going to do first. Um, but I don't have any more fingering weight yarn to go with my Cornish way. But that's definitely going to be the yoke, I've now decided. That's going to be the yoke. So I want to get something in this sort of colour, I think, to go with that. So that is, I'm dreaming. And all the socks, I'm so obsessed with socks right now. I literally have bought so many sock patterns. I bought the fairy lights, I bought the um, Helen Stewart sock society i bought the apple blossom ones because they were on a three for two or something um of helen stewart's literally all the socks all the socks and all the shawls don't i don't know i'd like to cast on another shawl i don't know what one i don't know which yarn could go with this this could be a good one skeiner maybe yes so um, I want to cast on all the things. I should have done a birthday cast on on Wednesday, but as I've taken today off as my birthday day off, because it's a Friday, that means I get a long weekend, I think I might cast on something new today. Um, don't know what it's going to be, but I am quite liking the one skein shawl. Could be a co-book. Could be something else. Don't know. So yes, that is all the knitting. I finished a top <laughs> not like me this is unheard of from the last few weeks 
but I have in fact made myself a garment. Garment, it is an ebony tee by um, Closet Case Patterns. I've had this in my queue forever. I made the short version. It's very short. Um, this is Ponty from, I don't remember, probably Ditto. Um, it's been in my stash forever, but it was the perfect colour. And again, this is another shout out to um, Rachel from Hey Sister because she made an ebony in a similar sort of colourway and it looked amazing on her. Um, I did the long version and it just looked wrong. The proportions were totally wrong. Um, so I have chopped it off. In fact, I've just realised I need to hem it. Useless. So, yes, I've chopped it right off. And one of my friends, Liz, um, said, oh, that short version would look amazing. And I was like, oh, yeah, actually it would. So I would wear it with the top underneath because it, it's as you lift your arms, this comes up. Um, but yes, it's not quite the weather to wear it, so I haven't. Um, but yes, I would definitely make another one. I also um, didn't do my normal shoulder adjustments, which is my own stupid fault. Because I was talking to the fabric godmother, Josie, and she made one and she said her shoulders were um, a little bit tight on the top. And I was like, oh, okay, well I won't do my normal narrow shoulder adjustment then. I'll just see how they work out. And so I've taken, I did shear off quite a bit of the shoulder, but it's still not where I'd want it to be. But I've adjusted my pattern now. And I'm going to make it again. In fact, this is, this is on my cutting table right now. I'm going to make a short one out of this. I can't pull it up because it's on the, on the thing. But yes, out of this palm jersey print in a short um, with short sleeves and see how that goes. Um, but I really like it. Hopefully with my new adjustments, or my new adjustments, my normal adjustments that I should have made in the first place, um, I should get a lot of wear out of these. I'm really looking forward to it. I don't think I'll make the dress because I don't think it's for me. I also bought... Um, another jersey to make maybe another one because also what you need when you're not sewing at the moment is more more fabric I keep saying yarn because I've just got it on the brain but yes I bought this from Village Haberdashery it will be of no surprise to you the colour at all it's called Sangria which is like an amazing colour um, I ordered some more stuff from Village Hab because they were sadly finishing their stash points system and I had quite a lot, I had sort of £10 worth of stash points. So I bought this and I wanted to buy, it was, it wasn't a tensile, it's like a brushed cotton um, in like a chambray colour. But they had to email me back and say, I'm really sorry, we haven't got it. I was like, it's okay. Um, so they're going to email me when that's back in stock. But I have also done a Blackbird's fabric order, which I've never done before. Um, which I'm looking forward to receiving because it has the tensile twill in it and a few of the other things that um, I can only seem to get from them. So I'm really looking forward to that order as well, but I will show you that when it arrives. Um, it's been a few weeks already, so hopefully that will be soon. I am getting back into my sewing slowly. It's just because I've been knitting, knitting is quite good for sitting around and doing nothing, which I'm excellent at. I am pro at sitting and doing nothing um, and also when I've got knitting podcasts to watch I've been doing a lot of that lately um, so today I'm definitely cutting out that ebony tea I am definitely getting back into it I should mention it's me made May um, I have been pretty good I've been doing it on my stories um, of late rather than clogging up my Instagram which is what I tend to do um, I've decided to just do it on my story. So if you follow me, it's at BB Handmade Dress. Um, I'm tempted to take off the dress part of my blog and vlog name um, because I'm not a dress wearer anymore. It's me, 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 in case you hadn't noticed. So um, I am currently wearing a True Bias Ogden Cami, which was made out of a curtain. Um, not even my curtain, it was free in a bag of fabric I got when I lived in Brighton. Um, as you can see it's quite sheer so the top bit is um, faced as Ogden Cammies often are. And I have three of these and I wear them lots and I definitely will be making some more. So in fact I'm going to probably make a cotton steel rayon one uh, maybe this afternoon. 
it will be one that everybody else has because everyone has this fabric but I'm after I'm really after the um, easy projects right now so this is you've all seen it four million times it's red totally not my thing red totally not my thing at all but because there's the pinks and the blues and the kind of mustard color I think I'll get away with it um, I'm not normally a red person because it makes me look quite red but I'll wear it with pink probably so yes that's gonna be an Ogden cami that's gonna be an ebony although it could be quite a good cardi with that talking no I'm not changing my mind um, that'd be an ebony and yeah so I'm not doing an awful lot of sewing I'm sorry to those people who love watching all the things that I'm knit, uh, I'm sewing but I'm just feeling knitting right now and you know we all have peaks and troughs and different things um, I am still doing me mid May because I have lots I think what I need to do with my sewing is I need to clear out my wardrobe badly because I've got a few things in there that I'm never gonna wear um, or I'm wearing sort of the scabby versions of something so my Hudson pants for example they look alright actually I took a photo um, and put on my stories recently and I will do a me made May roundup at the end but um, I wear them and they're not what I should have they're not made as well as I should have made them and so I wear them all the time as pajamas but I could do with chucking them out and just making a better pair um, and yeah I just haven't been feeling sewing so much because I've got so much in the way of clothing right now so I will have a bit of a clear out and hopefully that will bring me into you know sewing again but also I'm really keen on kind of getting these accessories in like my shawl you know that I can wear with and complement the things that I have because you know if I can wear an accessory I almost always will pick I'm loving this so much right now um I will almost always pick you know to wear a funky necklace with something or wear something quite plain I'm almost always in jeans these days um today I'm actually wearing grey jeans which for me is like revolutionary normally it's light blue jeans so that just gives you a clue I'm not being very adventurous with my clothing at the moment so bit of a ramble I'm sorry um yeah so it's me made May. we're going through it I'm doing it on Instagram stories so um, if you are still interested in the sewing content I am still gonna be sewing it's just taking me a little while um, so just keep stay tuned and there will be some at some point I'm sort of debating whether I need a different video um, you guys can let me know in the comments if you'd prefer for me to like tag some as knitting and tag some as sewing and do separate videos or whether you just want it all in one go and I have you know whips FOs for knitting and then I have whips FOs for for sewing um let me know which one works best okay so that's it for me today uh don't forget you can find me on Instagram where I'm most active and that's at bb handmade dress um you can also find me here obviously on YouTube I'm not blogging so much anymore I've got to be honest I haven't updated it forever so um, I'm tempted to kind of leave that alone and just focus purely on YouTube a little bit from now on and Instagram um, and you can find me on Facebook I'm sure as well okay but if you like this video please please like and subscribe we're really close to a thousand um, which is really exciting because I never thought there'd be a thousand people wanting to actually listen to my ramblings so that's great um, I may think about um, doing some kind of giveaway um, and getting into that sort of fun um, when we get to a thousand subscribers so that'd be great if you could like and subscribe also leave me a comment I really love reading the comments and getting involved with you guys seeing what you're knitting what you're sewing what you're making how you're building your handmade wardrobe so it's really great to see you guys and I'll see you soon bye bye